welcome back to Homestead to Health. My name is Caitlin and today I'm showing you my garden. Right, so here are my raised beds. Last year my only experience gardening had been trying to get grass to grow in San Angelo, Texas, which is pretty dry and barren for uh, the most part. And so trying to get grass to grow in my little backyard in my duplex, that was big big potatoes for me and so uh, we moved back here to East Texas and I brought my nine little baby tomatoes that I had uh, nurtured throughout the, the cold season and well, what was a cold season and I brought them here and all of this material here I found in our barn it was some leftover projects that my father-in-law had had and um, so I built this raised bed and I put my nine tomatoes in it and I was in hog heaven. I was so happy. However, this year I'm even happier because I have way more than just nine tomatoes. But I have this bed and this bed set up. And I'm gonna bring you in, I'm gonna bring you a little closer and tell you what I have going. But I also wanna show you these. Now I have these set up as trellises and I have my cucumbers in the hearts of them to trellis over. And then I have what was an herb bed on this side. These are my cucumber trellises that go on the end of my beds. This year I planted the same type of pickling cucumbers that I did last year, which are the 25 cent cucumber pa or cucumber packets uh, from the Dollar Tree. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, I do know that some people like to buy uh, heirlooms for everything, which I really appreciate all of the backstories and information uh, that come with heirlooms. But sometimes if you just need a really basic food, going to places like the Dollar Tree and stuff, I'm not above it. So these are my no fuss, no muss uh, pickling cucumbers. However, the cucumbers behind me are going to be yellow, bright yellow cucumbers. And they're called like Galet Tros or uh, the Dutch yellow cucumber. Uh, those are from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company and I really am super excited for them because I can't wait to pickle them with some of my black peppers that are be coming from the other garden bed. But that's a whole different story. Um, I love these trellises. They grow up like this and you just reach in and pluck what you need. I hope this shirt isn't so baggy it looks like I'm just wearing a, a really short dress. But, um, <laughs> so... Here on the ends of my trellises are equally as important. I set this up with an old um, trampoline netting thing that my brother-in-law had brought me. So these are just trampoline poles and some garden uh, string, I guess. And I set up this bed to keep um, the animals and stuff out of it. Uh, this is daikon radish. Now I know that it is past radish time. However, daikon radishes, they can put up with a little bit more heat and they're way more tolerant of our climate here, this hot, humid climate. Um, so I'm anticipating really great things to come from that. Um, I'm really excited for daikon radishes because this year especially, I'm really getting into like fermenting foods and Asian cuisine. And so I'm just excited to see what comes from there. But here on this end of the trellis, um, I have lemon thyme that overwintered from last year. And I have a couple of beans that my four-year-old planted and some mint that has just completely taken over. So I am done <laughs> with this bed. Even if the beans are, um, they fall through and they're over with, between the mint and the thyme, this trough is sewed up. Now, it's funny because this uh, little patch of sunflowers here, that actually came from whenever I had my chicks up here in the chicken tractor, giving them some scratch. They ate the seeds <laughs> and then buried some, I guess. And so this isn't the first patch of uh, black oil sunflower seeds, but it's the only patch that I let grow past, you know, a seedling. So. This is my infamous nine tomato uh, raised bed, and I'm really excited for what's gonna be coming out of it this year. So this plant right here, as well as this, um, these are variations of buckwheat. Now I don't remember which kind this is. I think it was red soba or something like that. And then 
this one is Takane Ruby. I actually left this here in anticipation for this video. But uh, so these are two different kinds of buckwheat and a, a very random self planted squash. I don't know how that got there. Um, but I'm really excited for the buckwheat. I'm excited for it because it's a fodder feed um, that as it gets older or as it matures and it starts putting off buckwheat, it's something that I can bring into the kitchen for myself where it's something that I can throw out to the chickens and have them uh, enjoy. So I'm really, and also, I'm so excited, can you tell, I'm just rambling. But also, I'm really excited for buckwheat as well as the amaranth over here because they are really good at self-seeding, which is why I put them in a raised bed. Because if they get really mature and big and full and they start dropping seeds, I know I'm gonna mow around this and so I'm not too afraid of it like, taking over the way that mint took over that trough bed so here in the middle though um i should probably thin that but this is all marigolds and so we have buckwheat on this side and it's orphan squash and then i have marigolds here now these are two different kinds of amaranth um this is love lies bleeding honestly i don't remember what this is called um I'll, I'll go back and look up look it up and then put it here for you but also uh, as well as that being a random squash I do have a couple of random squash on this side and the reason being is because they were uh, suffering in my greenhouse and I put them over here and then they kind of just got swallowed up by the bed and I'm just letting it happen so this is my second bed um, last year about midway through the summer I realized this one puffy right here just as it wasn't gonna do it for me so I came over here and I found even more of the same materials and I built a second raised bed garden. And I'm glad that I did. I was able to grow um, a second round of tomatoes that were actually way more fruitful than the ones over there. This year, I'm, I kinda hit like a creative wall. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do over here. I was trying to put cabbage over here and uh, just honestly, it got so hot so fast time got away from me and I just don't think that the poor cabbages that I have over here are gonna be worth much um, I do have a few celery plants but celery plants are so thirsty and I just don't think that they're gonna do well for me in this raised bed I think I would prefer to put them in the ground somewhere but who knows if you have any idea or inclination about what you might put uh, in this bed for you know this time of year at the end of May that you think that would actually do pretty well for me, please let me know. Drop it down in the comments. I, I've, I've kind of hit like like I said a creative block with this one, so I could definitely use some advice. And in this ring, we have our contenders: squash versus melons. That was really funny to me, by the way. Um. Anyway, uh. This is in fact my squash and melon bed. For the most part, that's all that's in here actually, except for some variegated nasturtiums, which are a companion flower to put with squash because they're supposed to attract the naughty bugs uh, and kind of take the dive for the squash. However, my squash are coming, are maturing way faster than my nasturtium and I'm already having problems with squash vine borer bugs and I really wish that I could kind of take you through here and show you like this is this and this is that but this is one of those cases where I kind of like planted pretty indiscriminately and I really won't know until it starts making fruit. Um, I do know that this big boy back here now he is a candy roaster squash and I was really excited for him last year. I uh, planted so many of them only to find out that the squash bugs love them they love them I, I haven't gotten a single fruit off of it yet and it is already being murdered but there are many different varieties of squash here in this bed as well as pumpkins and whatnot and this year I was pretty intentional about uh, purchasing and looking for squash varieties that were uh, resistant to drought resistant to heat resistant to pest bugs all of that stuff um, and so as these plants get a little bigger and as I start to do these weekly updates I'll be able to uh, go by plant by plant and tell you what it is and uh, it's going a little bit more in depth to those things as you can see I spared no space here's a method method to my madness I have 
mini squash over here, which I can tell you for a fact, this will be a yellow squash and so will that one. Um, but I have my squash here that kind of grow up the way that this one does, you know, kind of grows out and just sits all pretty. I have those over here as well as my traveling melons, which my melons are Ginger's Pride, because, which is a cantaloupe. And I got that is because the description was very sweet. Um, it looks very much like just your basic cantaloupe, uh, which is important to my husband. He likes no frill foods. Um, we, we disagree on that. But uh, So I got him a no frills, extra sweet cantaloupe. I've done moon and stars uh, watermelon and orangelo. And there's a really big reason why I chose orangelo. My squash over here though, uh, down this row and on the other side, these are traveling squash. These are uh, the zucchini rompicante. These are your buttercup squash and things like that. And that's why they are planted over here by the trellis because as they start to branch out, I will train them to go up here. So the reason that I chose Orangelo Melons is because um, whenever I was a kid, my whole introduction into this kind of lifestyle was because of my Pawpaw George. And um, he loved orange meated watermelons. And that instilled a love for them in me. But I remember specifically like um, being in his minivan with my granny and we're driving around and he would see these guys in their trucks with all their watermelons in the back and he would always uh, pull over and ask you know hey and, and just the gruffest way he could possibly do hey you got any orange meated melons <laughs> and, and it was it, it's so random I know it is um, but as I got a little older as I got to see my grandparents a little less and now especially since they're gone those little memories they're just they're very precious to me and so as I got older I always looked for orange meated watermelons and I would always buy them if I saw them for sale on the side of the road out of some guy's truck and so um, it was really important to me this year whenever I was growing my own watermelons and choosing which watermelons to grow that I had myself an orange meated watermelon just like my Papa George would want. This is my potato bin. And I have um, a couple of different potatoes in here, but really nothing uh, so super special. They were just $3 bags of potato seeds from Walmart. I've got one that I've got from uh, the Mexican grocery store that I didn't know what it was because I couldn't read it, but it tasted phenomenal. And so I kept one to make into slips and then I planted it. So I hope it comes up. I am really excited for this despite the fact that it doesn't have a very interesting backstory to it or anything like that. I'm very excited for the potatoes because who doesn't love a good potato? So I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking to yourself, holy heck -a -moly, this whole place really needs some work and you're absolutely correct it does. Um, this was my cottage garden last year. I tried to plant a couple of things in this that I thought were going to be really pretty. I was very inspired, very determined, and nothing grew. Nothing. And so what you're seeing right now, all of this mess, all of this growth is actually a super positive thing. I um, came in here earlier this year. I put a couple of transplants in, of squash in here with my girls, and they almost immediately just died. Um, so I came back through with a soil testing kit. Um, all of the results were, it was completely depleted. There was no nutrition at all in this bed. And so I came through with 10, 10 gallons of rabbit poop. And I just dumped it everywhere and I've spread it out. And with all of this rain and with frequent watering, um, not only are these beans up now, but there are also a lot of things hidden within all of this overgrowth. But the reason I even planted the beans here was because, yeah, we'll get some fruit off of it probably. But even if not, beans are an awesome nitrogen fixer. And so I put them here so that I can turn them back into the dirt. Foliage and everything. I want to bring you in and I just want to show you the secret world that looks like weeds that is going on here. So this plant, this one, this one, and a whole lot more of the same type. They're all coming up 
and that is an absolutely glorious thing because those are zinnias those are flowers those are flowers that I love that are very special to me and I had a couple of them planted here last year and I think those are all just seeds that have been laying and waiting for some nutrition just to come and soak up I've also got uh, little baby chrysanthemums no maybe that's not it what are they Pretty sure that's a chrysanthemum. Chamomile. I also have little baby chamomile that came up that was waiting on nutrition. And it's so wild to me because I planted all these things and nothing came up. I mean, for months, weeks, nothing. Nothing came up. I fed my uh, dirt. I fed my garden. I mean, it was so bad that whenever I came back through to plant for the spring, that there were hardly any weeds at all. And so if the weeds don't even want to grow... Maybe you need some help. But anyways, it's just crazy to me that all of this stuff lay dormant. And then now, after being fed rabbit poop, everything is just kind of starting to spill over. So that's why I'm not terribly afraid of the, uh, the weeds here or anything like that. I'm actually going to let this go until fall. And then I'm going to be using the space um, probably pretty beautifully uh, during the fall. There's also this huge rosemary bush that I planted whenever we first moved in here. We've also got our blackberry bush that is starting to put off little blackberries. Isn't it just wild that what looks like a mess and probably really kind of is a mess to other people, I see such beauty in this and I see uh, hard work and all of that other stuff. So I know that this probably isn't the most beautiful or interesting garden. However, I think it is super cool. I am really inspired by it still and I honestly just can't see what happens over the summer with it and then like what it ends up turning into in the fall. However, now is the time to get really excited because we're headed to the big garden. So before I even go through the gate, I want to explain uh, something that's happening here. So on all four walls of my garden, uh, where I have these posts and then like the fencing put up, all of these walls have something in particular planted there. Um, on this very first wall as we're entering, I have lemon cukes uh, that are planted and I also have um, morning glories, spinach, or malabar spinach and one other thing that I kind of forgot. Now, the reason I planted lemon cukes is because there's this heirloom story, of course, that goes with it. Like there was this uh, guy who's a charlatan who needs to go around selling like elixirs and all this kind of crazy nonsense to people. And he was selling these seeds at an outrageous price, uh, telling people that it was the genuine combination of an orange and a cucumber. And he had plucked the orange blossom from his uh, daughter's wedding bouquet and fertilized it using a cucumber and I mean it, it was a pretty off-the-wall story but people bought it and I just think that's really cool I think the story behind it's really cool I love cucumbers I love anything that tastes citrusy so I'm excited to see that come to fruition I'm really excited for Malabar spinach because I think it's really neat honestly there's gonna be so many things that I introduce you to over here that I, I'm just like well I picked it because it was it was neat it sounded neat um, I'm still very much a garden novice and so a lot of these things I'm trying for the first time and what I'm really attempting to do is not only just um, experience new things there's so many foods here that otherwise I couldn't get at the grocery store I probably couldn't travel to go where they're originally from or anything like that and so I am traveling here I am traveling time with all these heirloom seeds I'm traveling through different countries with all of these different seeds I would never have our foods that I would never get to experience so this is really not just a garden for me but this is a portal this is a portal in time this is a portal in place and it's a portal of experience and so um, yeah after getting carried away a little bit I guess that's the answer to why I've gotten a lot of these seeds this is my point of view right now so here this is the the row going into my garden and there's really four ro rows within one down the side here and on the side of that wall over there too these are all runner beans different kinds of runner beans and as I come up I'll be in later videos I'll be able to describe and tell you why I got which ones I got but these right here these two rows these are all peppers 
and then this third row here is either flowers or okra and then to the left of me I have my herb bed I have an eggplant and tomato bed a bush bed and then so on and then all of that in the middle is tomatoes so we're gonna get all up and close and personal with each and every single one so these are variegated nasturtiums and I spent a lot of time on uh, nasturtiums variegated and non because not only are they awesome companion plants but they taste good you can eat them now the first bunch of peppers that we have are called lipstick peppers this is a jigsaw pepper and the reason I grew him is because he's stunning. He's so pretty. This is Santa Fe Grande Zulu, which is a really pigmented um, pepper, like almost black. This one is actually starting to put off seeds and it is a mystery plant. I have no idea what it is. This is from M.I. Gardener. I'm pretty sure it's a pepper, obviously, but I don't know what kind of pepper. I'm thinking not spicy, like a bell maybe. Probably a purple bell pepper if I had to guess. Here I can tell by the coloring on the leaves before I even get to the uh, marker. This is a black Hungarian pepper, which is the ones that I thought would look really cool. Um, pickled and canned with my uh, yellow cucumber. Got some zinnias on the back wall, love zinnias. Got some more flowers here along with my beans. Shishito. Jay's Peach Habanero. Now these are actually still all really small compared to like their neighbors. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I've never grown, grown habanero before but I'm pretty confident that they'll pick up. So the reason I'm growing Jay's Peach Habanero is actually for my brother-in-law. He actually really loves spicy food and every single Christmas I end up giving him a hot sauce gift set which I know sounds really kind of like cliche but he's what he's the person that those things are made for he loves them and so i wanted to grow him something um super spicy like i said earlier i'm really getting into fermenting i'm going to be making my own hot sauce and i just thought that something called jay's peach habanero would probably be really good addition for doing things like that all of these larger ones right here that you're seeing most of them are chocolate beauties um they grow faster than any of the other ones that I've noticed. Right next door are uh, lilac bell peppers, which are a deep purple. Um, this one is a little bigger than the rest, and that's because I started that one over winter in my kitchen. Uh, the reason I'm growing that pepper is because purple is my favorite color, so why not? Um, this right here, again, another one that I started in my kitchen. Is there a fruit? Almost. But uh, Jay's, uh, this is sugar rush peach and um, the reason I grew that is because it's another spicy peach-esque one so I think this might be an aster I'm not sure but it's gonna be flowering soon if y'all see a plant that I'm not like oh that's what that is um, it's because whenever I had all my markers out here that said what plants were which um, my toddlers <laughs> like to come behind me and just bloop, pick them um, and so some of these things are going to be a surprise for me later on. Um, I'm actually making new markers in the house, like painting little rocks and stuff. So it's really great that I'm able to do this uh, tour so that I can, uh, whenever I'm editing, write down what my varieties are so I can have them for my markers. But I digress. So that if you see me not saying like, oh, that's what this flower is, it's because honestly I don't really know a lot about flowers other than what I grew last year. Um, I tried to put more attention into them this year because I wanted to, you know, do better than the year before and so on and so forth. And so I, would, I was diligent. I put flowers down. Um, I don't know what their names are, <laughs> but they're there. I know, I know which ones I did. I know I have snapdragons somewhere. I've got asters in other places, carnations maybe. Uh, whoops. <laughs> so right behind the lilac pepper are my hill country okra and I only have I say a few there's there's plenty in the world of okra but the reason behind hill country okra is because it I think it refers to the hill country in Texas and so anything that seemed regional to me that I thought would do well I snatched it up 
And so I have hill country okra over here, but I have a different type of okra over there that I will detail in just a second. However, staying in this first bed, I have my flowers that I've shown you, I have my peppers that I've shown you, but this big squash plant here, big squash plant. That big spot on squash plant there, that is a buttercup squash. And you're gonna hear me say it pretty often because I have uh, several of them planted. But the reason I chose the buttercup squash is the exact reason I wouldn't choose the candy roaster again. This is one of the squashes I was telling you about that um, was supposed to be pretty resistant. It said in the description, practically left alone. And so I'm hoping that that's true. I did plant some nasturtiums down with them and I've been spraying my garret juice and things like that on it so hopefully it does pretty well. Uh, another reason I grew the buttercup squash is because it's said to be a really good um, substitute for sweet potato. I love sweet potato and I love squash so if there's a sweet potato-esque squash, it's in my belly. But these beds right here are all beans. Um, I, I'm going to be picking some of them fresh but for the most part. Um, as well as the runner beans along the side of the fence. This is all going to be picked for a little bit and then left to dry on the vine so I have a big harvest of dry beans later. So that is a Cookstown orange um, eggplant as well as its neighbor. Now they were being absolutely torn apart but that garret juice with the citrus oil it keeps um, pests off the leaves. Now this jalapeno plant and that jalapeno plant. Those are my transplants. Here's another Cookstown orange. And they're over here because the pimento sweet, which is that little red marker back there and that little green thing right there, um, they were just eaten up. They, I had six or eight, um, something like that, planted over here and they were just torn apart. Uh, so I got these transplants and they're gonna be doing pretty well. I do have some flowers back here, but I don't know what they are just yet. What I'm really excited about is right here though. Now this and its neighbor are both fish peppers. Let's walk and talk y'all. So the reason I got fish peppers is because fish peppers are supposed to do really well in Louisiana. Now I'm an hour away from Louisiana. If you say that they are good to my friends, they're going to be good to me. So I'm coming over here to this next bed, this next um, bean bed, and I'm going to detail what's here and then kind of show y'all. But it, pretty similar to this trellis, I've got the second trellis over here. I have chrysanthemum melons planted at the base of this trellis. And at the base of that one, I think I've got a collective farm woman, um, a tigger melon, and one other small melon. I'm not sure. Again, that was a, a case of marker snatching from a three-year-old or almost three-year-old. Um, but also what's planted next to them is something called a cardoon. Now cardoon, as explained to me, is basically an artichoke and not an artichoke that globes like you've seen in the store, but one that grows like a stalk and you cut the stalk and then that's your artichoke. Um, also planted are some more nameless flowers. Um, but yeah, so m these little melons, the chrysanthemum melons, the tigger melon, the uh, collective farm woman, these are all really small melons that I am training up these trellises that I think are going to be absolutely stunning. I know right here behind me this collective farm, or no, I'm sorry, this chrysanthemum melon is growing really, really well. You see that yellow thing and those mounds of dirt that kind of go in a trail that way? That's a mole. So y'all, I have spent the better part of four days in my garden weeding on my hands and knees, going through everything, really busting my tail. And uh, whereas I'm happy that I did that because I have a healthier garden, it was hard work. I said in my last vlog that I've, I've gotten to a point where everything's just maintenance and I think that, that was kind of like a flippant thing to say because it makes it seem like everything I'm doing right now is easy but maintenance to me is the hardest part. <laughs> um, so yeah, today I, I got out here and I weeded everything and now I'm still pruning tomatoes and things like that. But the upcoming week I will be mulching. And you know how mad I am that I do all of this hard work and then a stinking little mole comes through and just kind of like kicks dirt up on everything and kills plants and so frustrating. So I put these things down in the ground to kind of scare him off and they're not 
working at all. I looked it up online though and I'm going to try to put castor oil in their little holes. But if you have a better idea, let me know. I can use it. But I'm going to detail what's in this back um, thing and then introduce y'all to my tomatoes. Before I do though, I just want to mention what's on this back. I have white Okinawa bitter melons as well as lufa gourds and then the Malabar spinach. Um, I'm really excited for all of those things. They're not up yet, so there's nothing really to show. This big boy over here is, is a zucchini rampicante, and you can see he is he is going for it. He's stretching. Let me get him in here. Come back. Come back to me. But he's got his buddy nasturtium, as well as a little yellow squash. I do have some other squash in here, uh, just kind of stuck where I could, but... This bet, this area right here, this is a American flag leak, and I don't know. It's really hard to kind of see them against the the mulch, but those are all leaks, and I have three really big again Okinawa sweet potatoes. Now these are things I've um, purchased from Baker Creek, and the reason I got those is because they just sounded so cool. I mean these are one of those ones, and you can see over here, right here there there and a couple of other places that you just can't really tell right now those are all varying sweet potatoes and they're all different shades of purple I think the Okinawa one if I'm not mistaken is purple with a white outside I have a couple of that are deep deep purple on the inside and purple on the outside uh, just very or purple on the outside and white on the inside <laughs> like they're just different variations of a purple sweet potato and I'm really excited for them again love potatoes uh, love purple and so I'm excited for those. I'm also excited for the American flag leeks. I don't really purchase leeks <laughs> often, but whenever I do, I, I usually make pretty gourmet, pretty fancy things. But I saw this one lady and she takes leeks and she makes things like broth and stuff out of them, which I think could be really useful for me in my kitchen. Up next are the peanuts. I have some plans to fill in my bald spots on this row. I have quite a few bald spots. Um, I'm thinking I could do celery if it's not too late. I don't really care for celery. Actually, it's my least favorite food ever. But again, it's one of those like good broth makers. But also, I don't mind celery if it's cut up fine and put in like dressing or anything like that. Um, really, really fine. But uh, yeah, I could just fill it in with that. Or I was thinking about if it's not too late, adding more squash, like tatumi squash. I've only got one, and it's one of my favorite varieties. They taste awesome. It's like a zucchini. Um, but again, it's very regional to here. It grows well in Mexico and it's also pretty pest resistant. So if I can get my hands on some of those seeds, I would very much like to plug in these little extra spots. But what's next, what's over here is that other okra that I was talking about. And the reason it's over here and I planted a lot. I mean, one okra plant will give you plenty of uh, fruit, but several okra plants are just going to be the definition of abundance. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't know if you've ever seen an okra blossom, but they are gorgeous. I love them. And this variation behind me is called Orange Jing. I don't know if it's pronounced well, but Orange Jing uh, okra. And it's supposed to be stunning. And so not only did I want it to be fruitful so that I can use the fruit, I love, I love okra. I'm, I'm like anybody else in the South, I love okra. But not only did I want it to be fruitful so I could eat it, but I, wa I wanted it to be beautiful. And right here behind me is my father-in-law's house. He's advanced in age, and I wanted him to be able to see things that are gorgeous easily from his porch. And so that's why I thought that he would enjoy okra. Just moving steadily down the line here for time's sake. I'm losing daylight. Um, I have my cherry red sunflowers, which honestly didn't do very well in the germination process. And a couple of them will grow up and then they just kind of die down. I'm not sure why. That's going to be another place where I have to plug things in. I have my cherry red sunflowers. And then I have a couple of nasturtiums. And where you see nasturtiums, there's bound to be squash. I've got two little squash there that didn't transplant well for some reason. So they're taking their sweet time. And then a yellow squash here front. I have... Uh, three different corns planted here. I planted them in a block so that eventually I can tie them all together uh, so they can support each other and then help each other pollinate. So I have three types. This one right here, this is uh, 
I'm gonna just murder this, but Japacona, Jap Japacona. Uh, this is a striped corn <laughs> mixed with a sweet corn, and then the little bitty corn that's just now starting to come up. That's called Dakota Ivory. That's from Baker Creek as well. I think everything but the sweet corn is actually from them. Um, these are Titan sunflower seeds or sunflowers. Now this guy is about mid thigh to me right now. He was to my knee uh, just a couple of days ago, but. Again, something that I thought would be very beautiful for my father-in-law to see. And then, what's in this corner? Nasturtiums. That could only mean one thing. Squash, 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 squash. These are all squash. So I have my buttercup squash there. I think I have another one here mixed with a, a lemon cuke. And I think I have an itty bitty um, collective farm woman there. Ooh. The night noises are coming out. I'm running out of time. <gasps> Look! A little fruit. The way I did these next six rows, these are all tomato rows. The way I did them is I would plant an herb, specifically basil. And I would plant a uh, basil, a couple of tomatoes, and then I would break it up using marigolds or borage and then perhaps another basil and then keep it going and the reason I did that is because basil is supposed to be um, pretty good at just keeping pest away isn't that right Kevin yes it is great Kevin thanks guys I've run out of daytime but I refuse to be rushed through this I don't care if this is a feature length film I will be showing y'all what it is about my garden that I love and so I will be seeing you in the morning so good night good morning Kevin Okay, good morning. I know that uh, last night I left off right as I was introducing the tomatoes, and so I'm gonna just hop right back in. These tomatoes here are um, purple bumblebee, and last night I showed you that there was some fruit setting, and that's the one here that has fruit setting on it is the purple bumblebee. I got it honestly because it looked really neat in the catalog. It was just a small cherry tomato, which out of all of the sizes of tomatoes um, being cherry and grape which I kind of put together and then like a lunchbox medium tomato or like aroma um, and then like the large setting tomatoes I love cherry tomatoes I like popping I like coming out into the garden and getting them and popping them into my mouth I like uh, being able to cut them in half and use them while cooking or to dehydrate them for a snack so you might see a whole bunch of little cherry tomato varieties but the purple bumblebee is red with these dark green stripes on it um i know they have them at baker creek but i'm pretty sure i got mine from um in my gardener for 99 cents uh at the end of this row i also have yellow golden nugget tomatoes which are another type of cherry tomatoes except for their yellow so i know up until this basil right here that these are walks of peaches which are a medium lunchbox tomato uh, that are light colored. I have no idea why I actually picked those because typically I wouldn't want a light colored tomato because you don't know uh, when they're ripe. But I think I, I think what caught me about it was just that like it was very striking and I couldn't wait to see something like that in my garden. So that's why I got that. I don't know what this variety of tomatoes are. It could just be a mod podge of um, tomatoes that I planted whenever I was just scattering everything out uh, but the basil here I believe is um, Thai this is the Thai basil I've gotten to that frustrating part of gardening and not having markers where I don't know what's what and so I'm gonna have to go back and look in the catalogs and stuff I'm pretty sure this is Thai basil I'm pretty sure so on this side of the trellis this entire row is full of black pineapple tomatoes which in the catalog of Baker Creek is described as being one of their best tasting tomatoes uh, and this is a large set tomato how could I not be interested in that so whenever it comes to um, using tomatoes in the kitchen and as far as like the health side to here at Homestead to Health um, I wanted to grow things that not only did I enjoy uh, visually, like, you know, I want to come out here to a beautiful garden um, that's very stunning, but I also wanted to grow things that I could easily turn into food. Um, you know, nobody wants anything that doesn't taste very good or has like a weird texture to it. And I hear that the black pineapple tomato has this very 
firm, juicy outer uh, place and then that the, the seeds, they gel so well and so it's easier to turn them into um, tomato paste and tomato sauce and to break down in the kitchen. So this was a very big um, excitement for me. Whenever I was planning my spring garden, my biggest <laughs> excitement surrounding tomatoes was for the black pineapple. So I'm excited to see how they turn out. I've never had one before. On this side we have Tommy Toe tomatoes. Now Tommy Toes are, uh, first of all, I, I picked them because the name was hilarious. Tommy Toe tomato, ha 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 ha. But, uh, so I picked them because they're hilarious, but also I picked them because they're another cherry tomato. Um, but this appealed more to my husband because they're a no fluff kind of uh, cherry tomato, just a small red cherry. So these are actually doing the best. I have some early Cascade tomatoes over there uh, that I got because I wanted tomatoes earlier. But um, these are producing and climbing and growing way faster than the early Cascade. So if you want a tomato that like comes out and it produces, I would really recommend this Tommy Toe. I haven't tried it yet, but as far as its growth rate, it is doing phenomenally. And it already has babies. On the other side here, man, I have got to come get all these suckers off. But uh, on the other side here, these are indigo apples. These are another uh, medium lunchbox tomato. And just like the black beauties I'm growing somewhere behind me, uh, the indigo apples, they're red, but then the, uh, as they ripen and the sun hits them, they have like this bluish tint that goes around them. And so I'm really excited for those because I think that they're gonna be visually pretty, but also who doesn't like a good tomato? This row here on the very first row, uh, this row here has Brad's Atomic Grapes, which is the other tomato like the black uh, pineapple that's supposed to be um, Baker Creek's finest tomato and this is a cherry style or grape style tomato but there are also some pineapple tomatillos thrown in here uh, according to the marker. Um, definitely the first half of this um, tomato here is called a yellow gooseberry and it's very similar to the uh, yellow golden nugget um, except for these are from Baker Creek and they tend to have like a little bit of a sharper yellow whereas that uh, golden nugget tends to have a more golden yellow to it. On this side, I have some more of my black pineapple, and then I have more yellow uh, gooseberries. So those are yellow gooseberries plus something else, and then this whole row is yellow gooseberries and more black pineapple. And why don't you just know that there's more black pineapple over here? Whenever I said I was really excited for that tomato, I was really excited. And so I have early Cascade and then a little random Mod Podge. And then here's another tomato that I was really really excited about uh, this is the Isis candy cherry tomato first of all you know my love for cherry tomatoes by now but second of all this one is supposed to be the sweetest most delicious cherry tomato uh, again from the catalog that's the description but I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good description <laughs> I guess and so I planted as many of those as I possibly could as many that I could get from the greenhouse um, so I guess the ones I'm most excited for are the Black Pineapple, Brad's Atomic, and Isis Cherry Tomatoes. Um, I do have one other tomato that's kind of behind me in the back, and that is Bonnie's Best. And it's just a very simple, no fuss uh, tomato that I got for my husband, which is similar to the early Cascade, just a very uh, basic red tomato. So over here I have um, some Bloody Dock, which is a type of green. I grew it because it looks cool and because I wanted a green that could last throughout the summer. The Huckleberry and Pineapple Tomatillo. That is it for this bed. What's behind me is more borage on either side and then all of these tomatoes are just really random. And uh, behind that even is real black eggplant. And even though I have the orange Cookstown uh, eggplant, I wanted to get the real black eggplant because, again, visually stunning. But then also I, I read that it has um, firmer meat in it, and I really appreciate that in eggplant. This is bronze leaf fennel, which is different from normal fennel because it doesn't have a bulb at the end. It'll just grow really, really high. And so I have two planted here at the corner followed by lemongrass to add to recipes, followed by chrysanthemums to maybe make some tea later. 
Uh, a blank space I will be filling with uh, lavender or bee balm. Tree lettuce to uh, copy some recipes that I saw online. And this is Chinese kale, which is supposed to look a little bit like a broccoli, and it's getting there. And it's supposed to do pretty well in the early summer, um, so I'm hopeful. And this is strawberry spinach. I'm growing it just because it's different. And this is tatsoi, which is a green that I swear by. I grew it in my garden last year, and I absolutely loved it, and so I had to have it this year. It very clearly needs to be thinned, but these are some baby zinnias right next to some purple bok choy and summer savoy, which is really good on like fish and things like that. And then here I have some mixed colored auric and it's starting to come to fruition. These are purple mustard greens. I got them as a free seed um, packet from Baker Creek and I like mustard greens a lot. So I hope that these turn out really good. And here I have lemon and lime basil. And then of course, no garden is complete without a little bit of dill. Followed by parsley, lemon balm, and a pumpkin that needs to hurry up and take off and run down the line. So there it is guys, that's my entire garden. Those are all of the peppers that I'm really excited about. The potatoes, the greens, the flowers, the tomatoes, and every little thing in between. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for the patience that it probably is gonna take to watch this really long video. Um, I've got a lot coming up this next week. I've got to re-mulch my entire garden. I've got some animal things that I have to take care of. So there is a lot going on here uh, just in this next week alone, especially with all of this rain that's supposed to be coming. Um, if you're enjoying this video, guys, please hit subscribe. I'd love to see y'all in the future. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. I'll see y'all later.